Welcome all friends from all over the world of hemp engineering. This is a new uh, chapter and I have a great pleasure having Mr. Leo Trisher with us. And he's gonna be in, uh, it's, it's a young fellow that is uh, organizing in Western Australia, the cannabis movement. I am very pleased having you on board, Mr. Leo. Thank you for having me, Roman. And I, I must ask you, my brother, uh, who are you? Tell us about yourself. How did you end up um, in the cannabis universe? Yeah, um, I've just been um, really, well, a bit about myself. Um, I've um, been working in the blockchain space um, and I've just been um, like a an occasional recreational user of cannabis and um, just growing up, um, I've always just felt it's been really unfair that um, it's been illegal this whole time. Um, and, and I've been reading about, um, about cannabis um, since I was young, um, even at school on the computers, I'd get on the internet and I'd find out there's another side to the story for um, why cannabis was made illegal. And it's not all just um, like a, an evil um, drug. Yes, I agree with you. This is a um, fight that um, we are working on worldwide. Uh, this provision issue is, is madness and it is uh, disgraceful for humanity itself. And me talking as a Latino, we were one of the first, or we were basically targeted 80 years ago and it's still being the problem. Uh, you know, Latinos, black people, and it is horrible. And in Australia, basically everyone that is Aboriginal is targeted uh, for the same problem. So I guess um, it is, um, it's a common, it's a common fight that we share, and I tell you this from my heart, and and I told you once privately that anything that the movement needs, and I can only add value as a Latino, but above all as an Australian, because this is a not only your fight, it's a fight of a lot of people, but it's a fight that it is it is uh, shared by my own network, which is just about 450,000 people. So hopefully this will reach uh, where it's supposed to reach. Congratulations on building up a, such a, a, a vast network, Ramon. Uh, we it's try great. to do the best we can, my brother. And you know, the, and we all assume a role in, our, in this business and all we can do is just do our best. But I know Mr. Leo that um, the governments not just the Australian governments are, they have um, unlimited resources to keep us separated, unlimited resources to keep this lie ongoing, which is the prohibition. Mm. Tell us about the prohibition, my brother. <laughs> um, it's actually, uh, it's uh, a lot of it is language, I think, um, like how they call cannabis marijuana, um, which was originally uh, an invented um, term um, to sound, I think it was to sound Mexican and to sound foreign um, and, and, and to make people fearful um, that it was, um, it was, it was um, like a new word and, and it just like, it was a hugely successful propaganda campaign um, propagated by Harry Anslinger um, back in the 30s. Um, so just calling it like the, the, the Latin name cannabis is, is um, I think it, an important step forward in, in moving past that kind of racial prejudice um, and, and talking about the plant as like what it can offer, like, cause it's, it's just such a nutritionally rich um, and fast growing plant that's, that's um, 
been really helpful to humans in over history. I agree with you. I agree with you that the world should be uh, uh, standardized um, as cannabis for both marijuana and, and industrial hemp. It is something that uh, it is part of the fight, I guess. No? <laughs> but I would like to highlight the fact, Mr. Leo, that uh, yes, every continent or every country has some characteristics characteristics on regards of how we perceive the plant. But after 80 years of prohibition for Latinos, marijuana is resistance. So um, I do understand that in Australia, it is not a well-seen war for, for what you just explained, but, uh, but um, it is called also ganja. It is called also a, a lot of other names. So regardless of um, we will die, and, still the plant will be called marijuana. It doesn't matter what we do. And, and I just also want to highlight the fact that long before the prohibition, marijuana war was part of the Latino culture. We have been smoking this since the time of Christopher Columbus arrived and long before that. So I just want to uh, educate as part of, the, of where we are. So in this um, journey that you are uh, you know, on board and organizing politically uh, this movement in Western Australia. Uh, I, I've seen uh, your great efforts. And um, have you had any conflict with the governments or whatsoever on regards to the prohibition itself, what you're doing? Um, um, well, uh, not too much directly um i mean we we um when we were trying to get members we got told off by the rangers because we were um holding signs um i didn't think that was illegal but apparently you need a permit to to um if you they called it advertising so if, i mean we just had little a2 signs um, that was the only kind of trouble we got into. I mean, it wasn't, wasn't very serious. We just kind of got told to move on and don't do it again. Um, so we got off with a warning. Um, other than that, uh, actually, we did have not the government, but Facebook for a long time um, didn't let us do any advertising because of the word cannabis triggered there automatic thing and so for months we couldn't advertise um but finally that's got resolved uh which is good and that is also something that a lot of companies and organizations around the world faces with the social media the mm. stigma that anything that has to do with cannabis or any other world related to it is banned or else so all we and it's literally that, taken like six months to resolve yeah, my goodness. So, for any business that's a lot of lost revenue and, and waste of time. So I love, have lost two companies with Facebook that they ban everything. And, 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 and Facebook is basically a very powerful tool to reach uh, audiences. So mm. yes, it's, it, it is something that we need to organize very, you know, to, to fight back. It's, it's not just an, in Australia, it's worldwide. The United States is a big problem. Europe, yeah, everyone, yes. It's a, so all we need to do is just keep building this network and become stronger one way or another. Yeah. At the end of the day, the science will have to put in the right place to the, to the politicians. Politicians, are, they're just following a stigma of 80 years old that they don't even know what they're doing it, you know? So they have to learn. That's no matter what they have to learn. Mm -hmm. so, so this brings us to, to our Western Australia universe. Uh, uh, it's the, the laws, the laws in regards to cannabis where, you know, you can drive and you get caught in the, and you smoke a joint two weeks ago and they found remains in your, in your blood or your system. And you're basically a criminal. Yeah, that's that's one of the areas we're developing a policy um, on right now. It's it's um it's very unfair that that um 
I mean, we can legally be prescribed, while we can legally be prescribed cannabis, um, there's no defense for if it, you get caught with it in your system. You can't go to the court and say, I've been prescribed. It's just, there's an inconsistency in the, in the way that they're testing um, for the presence of THC and, it, and that doesn't necessarily um, impair people's driving. Absolutely. Um, uh, also, is uh, technologically speaking, uh, uh, um, testing will only advise if you have remaining, but it will never tell you how much you have. So that is something that science cannot resolve it yet, and everyone is different, differently impaired. But the, but that is something that is for sure. And I have always said this privately, but I guess this is the first time I'm gonna say this because of your, <laughs> your, your, your inspired by you, what you're doing here in Perth, my man. It is very hard to accept that a bunch of drunkards, an alcoholic society will decide for what you want to do or what with your body. Yeah. What you want to intake. And we know now that cannabis is as safe as anything else. Sugar yeah. can kill you more than anything else. Mm -hmm. Alcohol is the main, main source of family violence and all kinds of social problems. And yet the drunkards decide that this is better than cannabis. So uh, I guess we just need to keep on going and showing that we are good citizens, that we are good people, yeah. And regardless of their laws, we are going to keep doing. We have the inspirations of the Americans. Americans have defeated a lot of stigma on regards to a lot of things. So they just show us that we need to keep fighting. And that's the only thing that we can do. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. The Americans have done a great job of, um, of legalizing cannabis in many of their states. Um, and also now they're talking about doing it at a federal level so they're, they're like just years ahead of us um, um absolutely so tell us about your plans what how many candidates are now the register how they, well, they, they tell us about i'm really keen to listen all this from you <laughs> yeah it's it's all happening now um with the election on this saturday um we've got 24 candidates so 10 in the lower house in um mostly in the southwest also in june Delup and hillary's um and and 12 candidates running in the upper house in all regions well let's hope that at least we can get one on board <laughs> yeah i i'm i'm really hopeful i'm i think because we are um running a lot of candidates in the southwest region i think um that we really got a a good chance of getting a um getting sophia in well the whole i'll, I'll hope that whoever get elected makes a lot of noise <laughs> oh they will <laughs> don't worry about that yeah we if we get a seat we're we're really gonna shake things up and and try to get cannabis on the agenda yes um, I guess the audience would like to understand that um, uh, cannabis is not just uh, the marijuana, but it's also industrial hemp. It mm -hmm. is um, very important to, to, I don't want to say to segregate because it's only one plant, which is cannabis. And this plant has various usage, which is recreational, medicine, and everything that we eat, uh, dress or we can do with cannabis. Uh, we can build homes. Um, basically, we we can create a whole new society, you know, which is the basic goal for a lot of people. Yes. I use uh, shampoo from hemp to, today. <laughs> well, I use all my clothes, in hemp, um, all my soap, my toothpaste. <laughs> you know. It, it's yeah, a very yeah. versatile plant. Uh, it, yeah. it's, Definitely. I mean, it, it's madness. Also, with the carbon um, carbon capture, it, I think it would be really good for that. It's just crazy that, like, in in a time where 
we need to be like growing um like we need to be reducing carbon emissions and they're and they're telling us and they're actually burning the plants and yes like yeah. getting rid of them we should yeah. be planting more of them well like i said there is a lot of education that we must do um and this uh, it is a complicated uh, situation because um once again uh, with the power and the resources that the government has, especially in such a small cities such as ourselves, it's very hard to accept that the government do not know who are behind the big business. It's very hard to accept that a, a few people or a few heads basically are uh, denying an access that is a human right for everyone. And no government should be you know, um, forbidden anyone uh, to to have access to medicine or or to use it to pray or to use it for recreational purposes. It's very hard to accept it. Honestly, this is something that I I come. I'm originally from Venezuela, which is a very corrupt country, and I don't think that level of madness in countries such as Australia. This is a very good country, a country that most politicians are accountable. I believe that what you're doing, Leo, is good for the country uh, because you're you know, promoting people that have the same ideas such as ourselves and, and I hope they are ready to fight to the end. That's what we need to do. Yeah. So having said that, uh, Leo, uh, do you truly believe that cannabis can be the basis for a self-sustainable society, uh, circular That's economy. A, absolutely, yeah. Um, I think once it's legal, um, we, we will have a lot more small businesses um, selling like products um, and, and, and like we'll have cannabis clubs and, and that's gonna like be a space for people to network and to learn more about it and um and to do business um obviously the, the farming sectors um will have another crop they can grow uh so definitely all levels um th there's going to be a lot more um economy i believe so and i also believe that the in uh, that the people should have the right to grow their own in their own yes. homes. That's very uh, important. Because yes. at the moment what we what we've been sold, I guess, by the government is is that um that 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 we we're, we're not capable of of growing our own and, and it needs to all be outsourced and very closely and tightly regulated. Um, but that's just not the way to do it it's it's creating all these inefficiencies like with paperwork and and expensive facilities and, and security like maximum security prison basically for these plants um and and yeah i mean giving everyone access to the plant is just going to bring down the 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 costs dramatically well uh, i could also Good luck to good luck to add, uh, Leo. Uh, that <clears throat> uh, by allowing the people to grow their own, you basically are, are opening um, competition. You can bring the best of the strains. You can solve. People can do experiments in their own homes um, to bring the best strain for health or else. I guess, uh, and I guess we are. Uh, suffering a monopoly of power where a few people decide that you cannot do this but i will do it um which is absolutely wrong yeah and and just picking up on before um what you said about corruption um like the and the alcohol um the, the alcohol and, and tourism industry have actually donated to our government to the government um a million dollars over the last ten years. Um, so I don't I don't know if there's any corruption there in in terms of 
them telling the government to not legalize cannabis that you know it makes you wonder um like if they're paying all that money like maybe they maybe there's something there well um uh, when september 11 happened in 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 new york some years ago yeah and there was a the i don't recall if it was the mayor or the chief police that, that said something like this it smelled like a bone it sounds like a bone so we are pretty sure it can be a bone so these kind of companies lobbying the governments putting money on or whatever i don't want to say it in their hands or else it sounds it sounds and it smells and it tastes like exactly what you're saying. So, yeah, I mean, there's there's, there's always um, uh, like two sides to to every story, and um, I mean, we 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 need to be able to to grow cannabis if if that's what people want to do. Like, I mean, it it it's also just like a really beautiful plant, and um, people enjoy looking after plants, why, why should the government be ripping them out and, and burning them? It doesn't make any sense. Yes. Um, nonetheless, I guess, uh, politically speaking, it is very important, once again, to those who will be elected, uh, uh, focus the plan as a whole. Uh, it's not just the fact that they will be fighting for uh, the, the personal use or growing your own, is that because um, financially speaking, the marijuana business is just a drop of water in a big ocean. And mm -hmm. the ocean is industrial hemp. Industrial hemp can basically solve all kinds of problems that we're facing, um, especially like you said now, this um, sequestration of um, CO2 or, or def deforestations and so many, so many other um, potential problems that we can solve with the plant. Yeah, I, I think it's it's also this kind of thing about control. Like the government might have this irrational fear that that if everybody can grow their own, then they're not going to be able to um, to to keep like to keep. Um, to keep everything going like but it's it's just completely irrational like i mean it's i mean yeah there's, there's just going to be more economy and and the government's still going to get like tax from from various sources ways. yeah yes. you 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 also very right on this leo um with the amount of resources and money that the government has invested in the war of uh, on cannabis they have to accept they, they lost the war because the black market is much bigger than uh, what they're doing so they are either benefiting from there or yeah. somehow it's making a lot of money from it and they know who they are because they they're the the government is the owner of the police the intelligence service saying no so if they really want to catch you because you're smoking a joint or me because i'm talking about all these, they have the power to do it, but they don't use the power to the right to the people that they have to chase, which are yeah. the big. But I don't want to say names because we're going to go crazy. <laughs> this is not the intention of our. But yes, I guess we have a, a fight to 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 you know to struggle that we need to keep on going, and um and, and we need to take the best examples from all over the world. Yeah, recently, Mexico just approved six plants per person. That's not going to kill the economy of no one. Mm. Uh, uh, Colombia, they just uh, they gave approval for 12 plants per family. Wow. So, so uh, Uruguay, the, you can grow in, in clubs with, with, without limitation. Uh, Argentina is going in the right direction. Um, uh, Ecuador soon is going to do the same. So. United States is heading, is leading this cause. So I, I don't. Um, we are in the in, in a moment uh, where, uh, economically speaking and financially speaking, the government of Australia will be more benefit. Will get more benefits benefits hmm. from legalizing 
free market the plant. Uh, moreover, uh, make everybody happy and peace and love. Yeah. <laughs> My thinking. But I'm not just a normal man. I'll be 59 very soon. So, uh, yes, I'm very happy that you young guys are. This is good, Leo. I was, I thought you were going to be like a 60, 60 years old because this is what we are doing. <laughs> All people are the ones who are fighting. Now I see you. This is, this is promising, my man. I yeah, am I'm, happy. <laughs> a lot of young people are, are for, for legalizing cannabis. Um, when I was re recruiting members, um, most of the people coming up to me were, were young people. Which can give us a great hope for our country. Absolutely. Yeah. Yes. Leo, would you like to to add something else to the interview, some a message to our to our people, uh, to Western Australia population? Yeah, absolutely. Um please um get to the polling booth on Saturday or early voting. Um it's um it's really just uh important to to tell your friends about us um we don't have a lot of media um and just yeah vote vote for legalized cannabis western australia party um and and share share on your social medias um tell tell family tell friends a lot a lot of people worried about bringing up the subject of cannabis but uh i've i've talked to strangers like um and and the perception has actually changed um, across the board, and a lot more people are actually open to 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 talking about it. It's not so stigmatized as it was before. I agree with you. I agree with you. Um, um, like we mentioned earlier, American has done an extraordinary job in showing to the world what it can be done, especially to the English speaker countries. Which is, um, you know, industrialized countries that can, that the rest can follow. Yes, although the rest of the world is not waiting for the industrialized countries. The uh, rest of the world is legalizing much faster. Mm. They are opening the markets, and sooner or later, and uh, sooner or later, it happened already in the seventies. Colombia basically took over the whole business by themselves, the cannabis business. Oh wow. So in the 70s, 80s, yes, they were the owner of the business. So um, uh, no one produced more marijuana than they did in, during, the, during the 80s, 60s, 70s, and 80s, yes. Um, now with, um, uh, recently, Paraguay is one country in the, middle, in the heart of South America. They did not only legalize, they, um, until recently, they were the largest smugglers of marijuana on earth. Now they turn uh, the economy into a, or their intention is to turn their economy into a industrial hemp driven society. I have a lot of friends working right now in Paraguay for the government and their main intention is to grow, 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 and build homes and do, and do textile and you name it. This is gonna be madness. So uh, a country well. such as Australia that I love by heart, where I have all my family, where I have all my dreams, I would be, would be very sad uh, for us to stay behind. Yeah. Especially where we can influence 60% of the overall population that live straight in our time zone. Yes. Yeah. And we've got so much land mass and, and sun it would be a wasted opportunity to to not um, grow cannabis. Legally. Well, it is part of our educational intention to remain to remain Australians that there are uh, facts, historic historical facts that as, that Australia was basically colonized to grow hemp. So, really? Yes. Um, it would be very smart for our candidates to understand that it is a it is a manifesto uh, in our in our in our purpose that uh, mining is is absolutely uh, a solution uh, that has been on the table for many years. 
but it was also at the same time the main reason or one of the main reasons why him was banned you know, forbidden for yes so it is very it, it, it is very interesting for everyone to understand that Australia was basically the colony of UK of, of England to grow him in Tasmania in Victoria I'm not sure if the in Western Australia but in the eastern states that was the main intention yes wow actually if I recall well when I was doing my original presentations the Queen Victoria used to have her own cannabis oil for her uh, menstrual uh, pains that's right yes <laughs> so, <laughs> yes yes so um, anything that you would like to add to the audience Mr. Leo um yeah, uh, just just get it out there. The spread the word. Um, the legalized the legalized cannabis WA party exists, um, and we we very much appreciate your vote, um, voting us number one, um, uh, particularly in in the Senate, uh, where we have the most chance of winning, um, the upper house, and and yeah, tell tell everyone people on the street um just spam everybody don't maybe not spam um but like in real life just talk to everyone about this and let's let's generate a bit of buzz well uh, one thing that put us together is the love for cannabis so in in war and in love there are no rules <laughs> 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 so um, as long as we don't hurt, hurt, hurt anyone or harm anyone mm. as the plant itself does so I guess we can do what we need to do because the government also do it so we cannot get behind that's I'm sorry it's the way it is <laughs> Mr. Leo it has been a great pleasure to have you with hemp engineering I I I will I will edit this uh, and I will post it today. Thank and you, will, everyone. And let's let's make this everywhere in Australia. Okay. Glad to be here. I am very happy, my man. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Roman. Thank you. Have a good day. You too, brother. Ciao. <laughs> Bye.